Hello, and welcome to another edition of Focus. I'm your host, Jalen Banks. Today, we will focus on Animal Farm at Palmer Elementary Zag at the mall, home remedies for clothes, and the updated telecom truck, and much more. Animals invaded Palmer Elementary School. Students had the opportunity to touch animals as well as learn about them. Our own Muriel Gamble brings us the story. Hi, I'm Mary Gamble, and today we're here at Palmer's Elementary School for Barnyard Friends Day. We're here with Ms. Hunter from Palmer Elementary School. How are you doing today? I'm fine. How are you? Pretty good. So, um, what inspired you to plan this event for the kids? Well, I'm in a apprenticeship program through the city of Newport News, and uh, it's a two-year program, and this is my second and final year, and uh, we do projects. And so my project for this year is marketing, and what I chose to do in my marketing plan was to promote the children eating more fruits and vegetables, and they've been doing an outstanding job of that. They've been eating more carrots, more apples, and I'm really proud of them doing that. So that's basically what uh, inspired me to do this, is through the uh, apprenticeship program. Could you tell us some of the activities you have planned for the kids today? Yes, ma'am. Um, well, with Palma Panda and his veggie sidekicks coming to visit, and he also brought along his barnyard pals, which is a rabbit, and rabbits love carrots, and we bought some chickens, baby chickens, and we have uh, puppy dogs, and we have a horse, and horses love apples and carrots, so that's kind of what I used to inspire the kids to eat more apples and carrots. What is your role in this event? My role, um, I actually coordinated it. And like I said, it's part of my apprenticeship, uh, my final project in my apprenticeship program. So I own horses. I love animals. Um, I try to eat healthy, too. So um, that's what actually inspired me to do this. So that's my role in it, to try to promote the children eat more fruits and vegetables. How long have you owned your horses? And like, what is your favorite thing to do with them? Horses? Well, we ride our horses. We have... Uh, trail rides sometimes at Newport News Park they have uh, horse shows there and so basically I don't ride my fiance he's the cowboy he, he trains horses he ride them he breaks them he does the whole nine yards but I do enjoy them. What do you hope the kids will get out of this event? Well I hope they will learn the importance of eating fruits and vegetables and you know, because it, it keeps them healthy and helps them to grow. I, tr I tell them Apple Day keeps the doctor away and, you know, carrots make you see better. So I'm hoping and praying that the kids will eat more healthier and the, with the animals and stuff, seeing the animals and seeing the animals eat the apples and carrots, it'll encourage them to do so. Thank you, Ms. Hunter. What was your favorite part about today? Touching the pit bull. That I got to pet the horse even if I was scared. Um, seeing the, the puppies and the dogs and the horses and the chicks. The horses and the dogs. Do you like vegetables? Vegetables? What type? Yes, ma'am. Yes. 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 Can you tell me some of the ones you like and that you don't like? Corn, peas, uh, and that's it. And what I don't like is okra, and I forgot all the other vegetables. I like carrots. I like I like lettuce. I like are cucumbers. Yeah, I like cucumbers. Those are my favorite ones. What about fruits? Fritz, I like grapes, peaches, bananas. I like all of them. String beans, string beans, broccoli, lettuce, fruits. Um, carrots out of vegetables and 
kiwis out of um, fruits. First question, can you please tell me the name of her? Her name is Zippy, but her registered name is Zip'em Up Sundown. But we call it Zippy for short. <laughs> when did you learn to first ride horses? When I was about nine years old. <laughs> what inspired you to start working with animals? Uh, I don't know. When I was a little boy, living in the country and being raised on a hog farm, horses became my second love. <laughs> so I've been working with them ever since. What is your favorite memory with any animal? I, I had this one horse named Pepper, which was an Appaloosa like her, and he was my world. Uh, Pepper was more like my lifesaver because he gave me something to do besides hang in the street. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Muriel. The Student Advisory Group of Education, better known as SAGE, conducted an event at Patrick Henry Mall that allowed Newport News Public School students to showcase their talents. Naya Kelly and Dion Davis brings us some of the sounds and sights from this event. Check it out. Hello, I'm here at the SAGE Expo. I'm your host, Naya Kelly. And Dion Davis. Let's go check it out. <laughs> So I am with the superintendent of Newport News Public School and I just have a few questions for her today. So how do you feel about SAGE? Oh wow, you know SAGE is my student advisory group and I have young people from every high school and we meet once a month and I get to hear their advice and then we create new things too which I think is awfully important like today this expo about high schools we've never done that before in Newport News but that was all the kids idea to really demonstrate to the community how wonderful our high schools are they're unique and they're all very very wonderful okay. and um, how do you feel about like some of these programs like what programs do you have to offer Oh, we have so many uh, magnet programs and choices that young people can make from the, the Governor's STEM Academy to the Governor's Health Science Academy, the IB program, the art school at Woodside, um, all of the things at Menchville that you see with the robotics team. So there's just, every school has its unique character. And I think that's really important not to have a, like a cookie cutter school system, but to have schools that fit the young people that go there and they help us make that school what they would like it to be. That's good. So um, how do you feel about like the students coming out here today and you see all of them you know setting up how do you feel about that? It, it really is um, it's very heartwarming I think that's the word I would use. Um, I'm not surprised because I know when you turn over something to young people they always make it happen better than you could ever imagine it but just to see this come together when I remember I guess January or February we start talking about it and there's as you begin everything there's a lot of confusion what's it going to be what are we going to do and now look at it I mean you would think we had had this for years and years so I'm very proud of the young people on SAGE and they then recruited students from their school to come here and really um, represent our school division to the community. Thank you. Thank you Nice very having much. you today. Hello, I am here today with Mr. Brown from the school board and um, what are some neat things that you've seen so far? I've seen some really fantastic displays. We see uh, Denby High School's Aviation Academy and I was just asking a lot of questions about our uh, first robotic competition robot here it does some amazing things. You can see it uh, moving around here and uh, they were describing its defensive capabilities to me and some of the very, uh, various things that it does. Our um, Health Sciences uh, Academy over Warwick High School is doing some amazing things and I see Menchville High School. All the schools here have a, a fantastic display so it's, it's been an exciting day and it's exciting to see all the different programs and things that we have to offer in, uh, within our school system. 
it's um, it's one thing when we talk about it as a board and as an administrative staff, we talk about the different programs that we bring, but to see the actual programs in action and to see the students um, bringing those programs to life, it's 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 really inspiring and it's it's more than what potentially more than what we imagined when we came up with these ideas. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm here with Zora from Woodside High School and um, what is your table about? Our table is about Woodside and it's showcasing all of our magnets we have and all the creative people we have at our school. Thank you. Hello, I'm here with Sophia from Menchville High School and she runs the Key Club. Tell me about it. Um, the Key Club is a really awesome organization. It's one of the oldest organizations uh, that exists in the country. We do a lot of volunteer work. We help out with the blood drive every year. We go to a lot of festivals. We go to a lot of elementary carnivals. Um, it's just a really good organization. You know, it's a lot of people who, you know, if you want to get volunteer hours, it's great for that. And if you want to just help out the community as a whole, it's, it's a lot of really good kids. It's a really helpful organization to be a part of. It's nice. Thank you, Sophia. You're welcome. Today I'm here with the student board member, Morgan Ryan. And I'm just going to ask you a few questions today. So how do you feel about SAGE? Um, I feel like it's a great opportunity to get students involved with making decisions about Newport News Public Schools. Um, and also it's a great way for the superintendent and administration to find out students' point of view about our school system and what we can make better. Um, that's a good that's a good answer so do you plan on doing something like this in the future or continuing this program or um, yeah if I go on I don't know what I'm gonna do when I graduate college I don't know what I'm gonna major in but if I do do something in education I think it's very important to have the students opinion so I would create like a student advisory group to get their opinion on certain things that are going on do you think today was a successful day for something like this Actually, I do. It brings a lot of attention, um, especially in a central location in the mall. And I'm very excited to see how many students we have participating and all the different displays that we have going on, too. Okay, so that's all I have for you today. Thank you. We gotta take a quick break, but we'll be right back. Welcome back. We have, we have heard we lead program of Newport News Public Schools. Our Paul Bowden and Summer Ailey will tell you about it. On April 23rd, Sedgefield Elementary School had a great day in the We Lead program. The We Lead program is an extracurricular program that provides activities and field trips that fills the student's day with learning and movement. The students started their day with storyteller Dylan Pritchett with stories that teaches about friendship and listening skills. Students were focused and involved in learning and laughter with stories that Mr. Pritchett was telling. If you wanted to know who you are, great, 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 Excuse me? I counted 10 greats, 10 greats. Y'all keep playing for the event You wiped out a whole generation. That could be you. What if you were wiped out like that? That's right, they ain't funny. <laughs> okay, y'all wasting time. If you want to know who you are. Great, 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 great. I hope these ain't set up for math, SOL. <laughs> After the performance, 
students went to their classes and did activities that involved literature, music, dancing, and poetry. I asked several students about the Wheelie program and what they expect to do in the program. What do you think you, will happen today in the Wheelie program? Uh, I I think that we're gonna like we already done some stuff. We in my class, we've done like theater and we've learned some things about theater and stuff. And so and then when they come back from the field trip, I think that they're just, we're gonna come into class and then learn some more about theater. What do you think will happen today in the Wheelie program? I think we're going to learn more about acting, and we're going, we're going to they're going to help us with our stuff at school if we don't know. Well, I think what we have. Do you think we will have some activities, some um, learning, or anything like that today? Yes. What do you think you'll learn today or any other day in the Wheelie program? I think we're going to still learn about theater and or motion because, like, that's why we're going on the field trips that we go on. So, yeah. Acting. Math. Do you think that this program will help you learn more about uh, theater, music, or anything else like that? Yes, because it's going to be helpful if you don't know other stuff. Yes, it, and it probably will help you with like your attitudes and stuff. Yes. Yes. Later that day, students participated in activities that involved health and exercise, such as Human Hippo, the Tour of Virginia, and the category of health. Students were happy to participate in exercise and teamwork with others. The Wheelie program is located at Sedgefield, Jenkins, and Newsom Park, and is funded through a state grant for these schools. Newport News Public School hope that this program would provide students with learning and exercise and they wish to continue the program in the future. This is Summer Illy from Newport News Public Schools. Have you ever seen our, seen our remote production truck around town when we conduct various television productions around the city? What did you not know? Was that the equipment inside of it recently updated? Myself and Summer Myself and Eleanor Stuck bring you the story. Here behind me right now is the telecom truck that has just been updated from SD to HD. How long did it take y'all to update the tele telecom bus? Well, this truck, um, it, it took us several weeks. Um, you know, you're trying to get new, updated, high-definition equipment into for, uh, a truck of this size, uh, and so it took Mr. Greg Lesko, our engineer, uh, several weeks to do. Okay. Um, what benefits? What benefits um, of the updates from the truck? What does it really benefit? What What does it help with? Well, you, as you know, high definition is where the technology is going. You know, your phones, um, your televisions, um, they're moving into 4K. Um, so it's just time for this truck to be updated to make sure that the students in our program are using the top technology so that when they leave our program they can go into college or a job market knowing that they've worked with some of the highest quality equipment possible. More, event, more events, correct? More events, um, yeah, and I'm, we were excited about that because we know that we're, the truck is going to be used a lot more now. Um, and it's just, just, it's that time. Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Price, for, Mr. Ray Price, for being here today with us. And that's all the time we have for today. We have to take another break, but there's more to come. Stay tuned. Bullying. Unwanted aggressive behavior that involves a real or perceived power imbalance. Bullying can be physical. 
Bullying can be social. This includes spreading rumors and embarrassing someone in public, which can make you feel alone. Cyberbullying. Cyberbullying is bullying that takes place using electronic devices. This includes computers, tablets, and phones. Bullying can make you feel insignificant and hopeless. Bullying can lead to suicide. Ask for help. Don't be afraid. If you feel that you are a victim of bullying, there are numerous resources to help. Please contact your school administration or local police department. Information is also available at stopbullying.gov. Did you know that students are receiving training to produce a television production with a truck? That's right, telecom students take TV1 and TV2 classes to strengthen and enhance their television production skills. Long before they go out with the truck, Courtney Luther and Dion Davis bring you what they learn before they go. Hello, I'm Courtney Luther, and today I will be interviewing some people about the telecommunications TV1 class. And today I'm here with Ray Price. He's a supervisor at Telecom. So, Mr. Price, today we're just going to ask you a few questions about our TV1 class. Okay. So, what is it that the students do in Telecom? Okay, well, you know, telecommunications program is designed to give students a leg up in the field of communications, especially broadcast communications. Students have an opportunity to learn all aspects of TV, how to edit, how to you know, go out and record, um, direct shows, um, write scripts, do some animation, learn how to do graphics, and they learn all the different formats like news, music videos, commercials. So a student leaves here two years um, with a vast array of experience to be able to take it further in college or if they, ch they choose to get a job. I'm here with Carl Daniels, my instructor at telecommunications. So, Mr. Daniels, today mm -hmm. we'll just be asking you a few questions about our TV1 class. So, what made you come to telecom? Um, I always liked working with students and teaching the next generation about the television business. Uh, while I was at uh, the television station, I was also an adjunct professor uh, at my alma mater, North State University. And so I was teaching uh, TV production and TV directing there. So in coming here, I could pass that along to you all. And the other benefit that really, uh, that I really liked was the fact that the program was already being enrolled with Norfolk State University as well. So I had prior knowledge of coming here by being doing the road, I kind of understood, you know, television production, MCM 250 or MCM 350. Uh, the other thing too, I think, is the fact that I grew up when my mother was also a teacher. Uh, she later became an assistant principal, so I think more than likely I probably got that teaching book from her as well. Okay, what would you say is the best part about working at Telecom? I think the best part is working with the students, uh, looking at the creativity, which also helps to enhance not just the student's creativity, but also your creativity. Um, because when you look at how creative uh, students can, can get in terms of television shows, different projects, that enhances your creativity uh, as an instructor as well. And I think the other part is that knowing that you had a hand in helping a young student uh, fulfill their dreams to become, if they wanted to become a producer, if they wanted to become a director, uh, going into the television field. So I think that that is the biggest part that makes me want to become a part of this. Uh, and then the other thing too is the fact that it's an actual television station, but you get to see programs that students produce, commercials that students produce, uh, PSAs. They get an opportunity to actually have it on television and gain real life work experience uh, so that when they decide to you know, go to college, go on an internship, uh, or they decide to have this as a career, they can say, hey, I produced a television show or I produced a PSA or something that aired. So I thought that that was a, a very good uh, tool and I felt like I could help be a part of that. Well, thank you, Mr. Daniels, for letting us yeah, interview sure. you. 
and I hope you spend a long, long time at telecom because you're a great teacher. Oh yeah, definitely. Thank you. I appreciate that. Carver, today I'm just going to ask you a few questions about our TV1 class. All right. Do you feel that you have learned a lot from this program? Yes, I feel that I've learned a lot from this program because I came here with just a little experience, but now I, I have skills in graphic design, computer editing, all of that great stuff, so I'm kind of happy and excited about that. Would you consider going to college or finding a job in this work area? Yes, I definitely have. I've enrolled in Full Sail University, so I plan on pursuing a career in media communications and, you know, furthering my knowledge and technology. So, are you on the production crew? Yes, I am. What exactly is the production crew? Well, the production crew is a bunch of us that go out and do outside projects like football games, uh, tennis tennis games, softball games, you know, just, just extracurricular activities. But the benefit of that is we get paid to do it. But it's also a benefit of working with a whole bunch of great people. You get to meet new people. You get to explore different areas and learn different things. So the production crew is just pretty much a big family in a way. So would you say you like doing that as a, a job per se? Yes, I do. Okay. So thank you for being here and thank you for letting me interview. No problem. Hope you have fun the rest of the year in class. Thank you. That's just some of the many things that people have to say about the telecommunications TV1 class. I'm Courtney Luther, and I'll see you next time. Have you heard about Color Me Red events? Our own Sarah Holly and Kayla Michael went out and saw it happen. Here's their report on what this event is about. Let's take a look. Color Me Red is an innovative way to have a 5K run. It is loosely based on the Hindu festival of colors, otherwise known as Holly. The festive colors used are a sign of winter's end and spring's new beginnings. Or in the case of Rad, the color represents the end of lame runs and the beginning of fun runs. Start out as clean as a newborn babe and throughout the run, our volunteers will coat you with liquids, powders, and gels of blue, green, pink, purple, and yellow. All right, so we're at Color Me Rad today at City Center in Newport News. Uh, we're having lots of fun. There's tons of color everywhere. At the finish line every 15 to 20 minutes, participants grab color powder and get colorful. There will be music, food, and more rad runners in the 80s. They have tons of Color Me Rad events in the United States and Canada. Just head over to www.colormerad.com to register for the next race in your state and experience all the colorful fun. Join us next time for Focus.